that there is a crafter what has been raptored uh, and it's my latest project i've got to do an electrical build on it it's been done on the outside and as you can see there's a window in place oh that sun is glorious excuse me a moment ah oh, it's still quite early on a sunday um but that sun is just fantastic it doesn't happen often enough so getting me vitamin d in anywho raptored crafter um that looks fantastic and on those alloys as well Oy, superb looking thing uh, big blue will be back before too long um, and that's having some updates but the electrical build that's happening on this is going to be quite different to the electrical build that happened on big blue for very good reason not accidentally it's planned that way let me chat you through the components that we're going to be using and why we're going to be using them now i like my victron kit who doesn't but it's not always appropriate you see victron is particularly useful in an instance i think where people are going to be living in their vehicles or spending very extended time periods because it's so reliable um, and you get a lot of data from it and you can track things as to what's happening on what day and i think i just swallowed a bug um <laughs> on this particular build i'm going to use renergy okay well i'll have to watch that in the edit to see whether i did swallow a bug or not but anyway <laughs> um this is a Renergy uh, kit that I'm using on this particular build. It's more expensive than the very entry-level kit, which is completely unbranded, it's the stuff you've never heard the name of, um, but it's nowhere near as expensive as the Victron. In this particular instance, it's actually more appropriate than the Victron. The reason being, this device here is what they call an MPPT charge controller and B2B in one box. What does that sentence that I've just spat out mean? Well... You connect it to solar panels and you also connect it to the engine alternator and it does the job of two devices the solar charge controller and the battery to battery charger so where this vehicle differs is it's going to be parked on the driveway for most of the time and then the client's going to want to jump in it and just drive off in it um, what this does is when the leisure battery is full it then the solar the surplus solar instead of that just switching off which is what had happened in most vehicle builds uh victron included this actually then starts trickle charging the starter battery so you don't have to have the vehicle plugged in on the driveway all the time to a battery charger to make sure that your starter battery is ready to go so i thought that were rate nifty so we're going for that um it kind of if you can get solar panel, uh, no, solar energy as well, even when you're driving along, it will only rob the alternator of the energy that it needs to charge the battery. It will, uh, it kind of prioritizes solar as well, which I quite like. I thought that was a good feature. Um, so I'm going to let you know how uh, I get on with that. As well as that, we have all the components that I need in order to build one of me automatic transfer switches. Solar panels come in the form of completely ordinary i mean there's not a lot i can say about those that makes them terribly exciting but solar panels these days you know that's kind of what to expect they they do a single task and they perform very well they're very reliable they're nice and lightweight so they'll do very nicely um and we've gone for those so it's two 120 watt panels which is fine and then there's a, you'll be able to see hopefully some pen marks on the ceiling where some vents are going so They've arrived and it's kind of planned out as to where they're going on the roof to accommodate the vents so they're not in any shading or whatever. So I'd best crack on, hadn't I? We're going to get started with the solar panels for a few good reasons. One of which being it's a beautiful day and I want my uh, Sikaflex um, and my holes in my roof to heal up nicely without water ingress. I don't really want water in the van, that's kind of been an ongoing theme with my building, hasn't it? So, let's have a look at this. That sticker is telling us facts about the charging characteristics, or the, it's the 100 watt panels, not 120 watts, I do apologise, but if I look here into manual, it says here that charging will be activated when you get above 15 volts for 10 seconds. Let me just go into that for a sec. You see, to raise, let's liken it to temperature. If you put a pan of water on the stove 
and the water inside the pan was 50 degrees Celsius and you applied enough gas to it where if you were to hand your, hold your hand over it, it was 40 degrees, you could do that all day long. But that pan of water ain't going to get any hotter. In order for you to raise the temperature of the water in that pan, you've got to apply heat that is warmer or hotter than the water already in the pan. So you turn the gas up um, so that it's pumping out at 100 degrees and once the water in the pan is equalised with the temperature of the flame, your water will be boiling. It's the same with battery charging. In order to get the battery up to a voltage of about 14.4 volts or 13.8 volts or whatever it is your battery sits at, you've got to have a higher voltage than the battery already. If you've got a solar panel that sat at 11 volts all day long, guess what? It ain't charging your batteries. So it's obvious what we should do here. We should link these two panels that we have in such a way so that they'd very easily hit 15 volts. I mean, if they're both 12 volt panels and you were to wire them in series, you would get 24 volts. So even if they weren't performing very well, you'd get 15 volts, wouldn't you? So that would definitely be the way to go forward. Now, that would be fair of most solar charge controllers, and that's certainly a way to set them up for winter sun. So, in order to do that, I'm actually going to just wire them up like that. We're going to be a bit careful. One thing to note, it's a lovely sunshiny, sunshiny day today. And when I plug, these panels are creating energy, if you like. So, electrical tape and safety come to mind. So here we are, I've wired my solar panels up to the cables that we have. They're nicely marked, so we've got positive. We go off the positive, onto the wire that's on my multimeter, positive. The two panels connect together, so the negative of one connects to the positive of the next one. And the way that the connectors, these MC4 connectors are molded on, means that naturally, if you take the neg of the first panel, it'll want to plug into the positive of the second panel and then that travels around we come off the neg of here onto my multimeter i've got these little connectors called wago connectors which are just completing the circuit for the moment so that goes up to my multimeter positive and neg and if i read on there dc voltage is reading 33.8 volts that's clearly the way to go about it because they're not even facing the sun, and they're already producing more than 15 volts. I mean, when you put a load on there, that voltage will get dragged down. That's what you call an open voltage. But still, that's clearly the way to go, right? No, well, yes and no. <laughs> you see, in here, in the manual, and that's why you should always check manuals, um, it'll actually disconnect. Let's get rid of there. It will stop charging if the PV, photaic voltage, um, input voltage, is higher than 25.5. So if it records higher than 25.5 volts, it will stop and it won't resume until it hits 24.5. So we can't have them like that because it's already doing 33 volts. So what do we do in this instance? Well, we wire them in parallel and I'll show you that now. And so here we are. This is actually how we're going to have them wired um, in parallel. OK, so the voltage is reading half of the previous voltage. That's absolutely correct. That's what we want because it's above that 15 volts. So it'll activate the charging. But it's nowhere near the 25 volts that it is where it cuts off. So it's within the range that we want. And the way that we've done it this time is instead of one panel looping into the next one they both come straight out and go into these connectors and then out of there so this kind of makes it a two into one so there's a two into one for the negative and there's a two into one for the positive so there we are so i've needed to plan ahead of time that this is how i'm going to do it and there's a lot of instances where you would wire them in series particularly if you wanted it for winter sun so that you could maximize the voltage that you're getting um, when the sun is low in the sky and not that strong a sunlight 
but with this particular charge controller it's a must that we put them in parallel so that's why we've got those connectors so that's how we're going to have them installed so i've got to consider that as i'm getting them bolted up onto the roof i've then got eight of these bracket mounts okay and the way that these work is they mount that way round onto the side of the panel we're going to utilize the existing holes that are in the panels and what we're going to use we're going to use a combination of a nut and bolt and washers okay the bolt passes through the washer passes through the bracket passes through the hole and then is tightened up on the other end with a nylock another washer and then doing a terrible job of showing you this stuff but a flanged nylock nut that way there can be vibration there can be movement and then it's not going to come undone so that's going to hold the bracket to the panel and then what is going to hold our brackets to the roof is these self tapping things here so we're going to drive those in through the body of the van uh, using something called an impact driver if you've not used an impact driver before i i massively recommend especially if you're going to be doing some woodwork as well definitely invest in an impact driver it looks like a drill um you can use them for things like phillips head screws and pz2s and all the different screw types that you'd use but when we really want to get some because these self-tapping screws they're they're going to drill the hole and then plug the hole for us and they've got a little rubber seal washer on them as well so they'll seal up their own hole we'll give them a little lick of sycoflex as well just to help things along but their best is no previous drill hole just know where you're going to drill and then drive it in with the impact driver trust me it's worth the investment i'm trying to cover as many elements of this as i possibly can that is one manky looking spanner isn't it i'll clean that up a little bit before i use it but it'll do the trick so i'm going to use that on the back what i've done is i've put the bolt on the back because it's a lot easier to pop that through and then just stick a ring spanner around it and hold it in place while i ratchet it up with the other one i'm holding there both eight mils so i've got to do that times eight so bits and pieces that we're going to need in order to get this lot installed here's one of the first bits this lives on the roof we're going to make an hole in the roof for the cables to pass through we're going to pass them through the end that i've got currently connected to my multimeter which is just a thinnish wire as opposed to trying to get the plugs through okay so the cables are going to feed up through to roof they're actually going to root from wherever it is going to be in the van up along through up into the roof and then wherever that happens to be probably in the middle between the two solar panels to be honest with you where that's going is we've then got to be sick of flex down stuck down with a waterproof sealant and i'm actually gonna i'm gonna show you a little bit of a trick that i do with that um you can buy these in a variety of different fashions this one's got a flange on it here so it's got this flat bit that can be anchored down to stuff you wouldn't believe the number of these that I see that don't have that or they have a really shallow one and you think well what point is that we're going to drill holes in this and we're going to clamp this down what we're going to do is we're going to clamp it down a little way with the sycoflex if we clamp it down all the way it'll just push all the sycoflex out of the way so what we want to do is tighten it down a little bit let the sycoflex go off and go hard it's still a bit rubbery even when it's set and then we tighten it down and then it's under tension um and it's a bit like having an o-ring on something then that's under tension it's just the more better a way of doing it so first of all get the right thing these are only cheap on amazon ebay and other stores are available but get yourself one with a big flange and then get yourself some sycoflex now i've got it in white black and gray i've got some mounts to go up and screw in i'm either going to go for the black or the gray i might go for the gray as the van is a bit of a gray color i don't think it matters massively it's on the roof but anyway this is the stuff because not only does it stick to absolutely everything it sticks everything to everything and it will set in the rain and 
People will use bathroom sealant. The amount of times me and Liam have peeled bathroom silicon sealant. This is no more expensive, but one real important factor is it is UV compliant, or rather it, it doesn't degrade over time. If you use regular bathroom sealant, it will crack and fail due to ultraviolet light. So there you go. Get that stuff. So there's one all clamped up. We might as well use the holes that are there. So that's why I've used the nut, bolt and washer there. You might be saying, why are you using these instead of a nut and bolt on the roof? But if you think about it logically, I can get to both sides of this very easily. I can hang the ring spanner off the back of here. I didn't clean it up at all, did I? I just said I was off camera. <laughs> I've used it. Anyway, you hang the ring spanner off the back there and you can tighten up on the front. But when I'm up on the roof, I need this to drive in without any assistance from underneath. Unless I've got somebody with me who can literally stand there and hold the spanner. So that's that and the fact that it's got that rubber seal and then that large washer on it and the fact that we can get some decent torque on it because instead of it being like a Phillips head it is in fact it's like a bolt head on it um for a variety of factors that's the way i'm going and it's not too long it's enough to go through the thin skin of the van without penetrating too far and causing us a load of bother there we are that's why we're using those i hope that all makes sense so that's what i was saying i don't think i did a particularly good job of explaining myself but basically what i was saying is trying to get that plug assembly especially when you've put the double adapter the mc4 double adapter on the end you ain't, you ain't getting that through a hole in the top of the van so this way you pass it through there then we've just got to cut a smaller hole in the van and the cable i've already trimmed off the end and then whacked a load of insulation tape on it so it's very unlikely now i'm going to tear through that and so because as soon as i hook up those connections this cable will be live and i don't want to be inserting it apart my person i don't want to be coming a cropper as a result or it touching the body of the van or or anything along those lines so safety first broken one of my own rules before we get started with all of this you've ordered the right bits you're just about to come and install them stick your spare battery on charge do it now or, or rather do it before you've actually started climbing up on the roof and doing anything because you'll need that gentle little reminder it's one of the first jobs you do plug your charger in get your battery charging and you can get on with everything else i did that first i just didn't tell you that i did that first anyways okay i've done a series of measurements i know where me fan hole is gonna be and i've marked that up with tape on the side of the van i also know the measurement from the seal that's on top that goes from the flat bit to the curved bit so i've got various bits of information to tell me what it is or where it is that i need to start the panels going back i know where the other hole's going to be um i'm using the metric system today so you know just for a change got me double Quite a rather quadruple metric tape measure from uh, Gosford's handyman. So, you know, it's unlikely I'll make a mistake with the maths because I'm not using 37 and 11 wanty wants and all that sort of nonsense. Um, I'm using numbers correctly and properly. So, uh, watch me foul this up now. <laughs> the roof has a gentle curve to it. So, what I don't want to be doing is mounting the panels this orientation. What I want to do is mount them this orientation. Okay, reason being that the fixings mean that it's not, if you clamped it that way and then was to tighten it down, it could be that it was started to bend the panel because it might actually, the curve of the van might mean that it bottoms out in the middle. Whereas if I go this way, that's very definitely not going to happen because it's such a short distance between the feet. Uh, but it also means that my hole, what comes through roof, is right bang smack in the middle so as soon as it has been hit with water water will run off in either direction so there shouldn't be any standing water even if the van's parked over at an angle as to one side 
I shouldn't have water running against into what is effectively a hole in the top of the roof. So that's the logic with that. Two panels, both orientated side by side, one there, one there on the roof and the hole in the middle. So there we are. Jaws getting all my bits and pieces ready to uh, get these solar panels stuck down. And just a little tip here for you. This stuff is happier when it's warm. So if you're doing this and it's winter, get yourself a flask like that in which it just snugly fits and heat it up at this stage because in about 10 minutes when you want it, it'll be better to work with. That simple, really. Just set up, ready to go, and look what happens. It's the following day. Um, it was a write-off yesterday. Beautiful sunshine, and then it went to nonsense. Ducks. So I'm on my way back to the van now. I just left everything as it was yesterday, so shouldn't take very long to get back up and running. There's my green tape mark from earlier, which means my vent goes in there. Um, I want to make sure that the start of the panels is far enough away from that vent so that um, it doesn't call, um, cast a shadow. The fact that they'll be raised up slightly is ideal. It has rained, there is water, but for example, where I need to drill holes and stuff, I can dry off easy enough. So I'm not I'm not worried in the slightest, it's not going to cause me any real problems. Um, testament to the fact that it will work. I don't know why the focus jumps around a little bit. It doesn't like these solar panels for whatever reason. Anyway, I'm going to get on with that. I'm going to introduce you to a couple of additional tools. I just got my tools out on the... If ever you do abandon a project like this, by the way, well, you've got to make sure the connectors of the solar panel just make sure that they're tucked under and protected and up off the deck so they don't get wet. So I walked away from this and just left these as, as they were because there was no wind um, forecast for where we are. But just make sure that those connectors are protected and they're not just going to be sat in water. Okay? This here is a step drill. And it's another one of those things that I highly recommend. This cuts everything from two, 4 mil up to 42 mil. Get one they're brilliant so that there i've just penned round where one of the feet's going to sit and then i've hit it with an 80 grit block it cleans the surface but also just kind of scratches it up a bit i've not gone through the paint certainly not gone outside of these lines but it's just so that me adhesive has something to adhere to it's a key if you will so i've used the 80 grit on the underneath of here as well it's aluminium so even if I do go through the paint it's not going to affect it this is steel so that would rust but I've not gone through the paint um, and that dollop is big enough we don't need to go crazy I just want as well as the bolts I just want something for, for it to adhere to it's not unreasonable is it it don't work I don't have GoPros. If somebody wants to buy me one, you know, so I can do this sort of thing for you, then brilliant. But that's in. Get a nice little bit of squeeze out. There we go he's in so i've just cut the holes in this in no particular place other than six holes which seems excessive but the great thing about using the step drill is drill from one side then drill from the other and it deburs it for you so there's nothing hanging around above or below brilliant brilliant drill bit they are but i'm not really bothered where this goes all i want to make sure is that well it's not in a place where there's a supporting rib because it's the devil's own job to fish the cables out then so i'm going to go directly behind the panel here uh, where it's kind of out of the way of wind when you're driving i'm leaving enough spare cable so that if the customer decides to have these on top of a roof rack or something or change the configuration they can 
uh, and also to so I can tuck those connectors just out of the way of main rainfall really so I'm gonna start by drilling a hole in the roof <laughs> having said I'm not fussed where it goes I need to get in with the other tool to clamp the sides up so I need to come off a little bit so that I can get the impact driver in so I'm gonna go right in the middle of there let's watch that being completely the wrong place now so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shove that through there so it's totally obvious as to where it is I've not got any lights in the van that's come through brilliantly in between well it's not a surprise <laughs> but what I mean is uh, it's come through in a good place um, these screws here that have come through reassuringly I'll oh, focus I know it's dark I haven't fitted the lights yet uh, reassuringly have come through and they've got bits of Sikoflex on them which means it's dragged it through the hole which I'm pleased about so we're getting a little bit of squeeze out at the bottom that's good I've not tightened that up too much like I said before what I'm gonna do is wait till that's gone off I'm leaving town now and I'll be back this evening and by that time it'll be dry enough for me to tighten that up so I'm gonna walk away from this for the moment but with one last top tip these holes that are drilled in here were bigger than the thread uh, so they pass through easy what I don't want is as I'm fastening those down it to be chewing into the plastic and causing a thread into the plastic because that could prevent me from clamping it up so what I want is a hole big enough so that that just pops straight through that fastener just pops straight in and then that way when I apply tension it's definitely clamping it all the way down to the surface it's definitely not caught on one of the threads kind of difficult for me to explain if if the penny hasn't dropped with that but basically let's say they're a four four mil diameter hole cut your hole six mil and then it won't catch on the edges that's what i'm trying to say so as i've said that's done and we'll catch up in a few hours so it was all still a bit soft yesterday so i've left it till the following morning and i'm going to try and do this you can see that's loose there There we are, that's that task done. And there we are, that task is, well, from the exterior perspective, completed. Final little jobs are to bung the hole and to make sure that the cable isn't chafing on anything sharp and to coat the bare metal with something. But I just wanted to show you this because really and honestly, this is we're getting to the dregs of this now. Cable runs across there. I've got to tidy that up, obviously. But I've got, I'm presented with two. You carry on, guys. Don't mind me. Um, you're presented with two black cables here where we're going to plug them into the solar charge controller. Um, and at which point, once you've got it mounted, as far as the solar's concerned, you've got the battery connections. We're going to do that in another video. Um, but I just wanted to show you this two black cables, and then neither are labelled. But if I just hook up the multimeter here you see how it says minus 21 volts that means my red which would use as my positive is in the wrong hole so let me swap that over and then i'll show you the reading that we get then all i've done is swap that one for that one that one for that one and that's what my polarity around so i can mark this cable up now as positive irrespective irrespective of the solar charge controller that i'm using that will be correct that is Positive, so I've got two black wires, no way, no way of identifying which is positive, and that is probably the best way to do it. If it says nothing before the voltage, it's a positive value. If it says minus, then it is minus voltage, which is tells you you've got your polarity wrong. So there we are, that is it for solar, um, on with the battery to battery connections. So um, if you were just installing solar, I appreciate there's battery connections to do, but we'll cover that in a later vid. So, um, I hope that's been useful. Thanks ever so much for watching. Cheerio. Bye-bye.